Hello everyone and welcome to another Batman Miniature Game 3rd Edition Battle Report. Today, with objective deck included, we have 350 rep of the Birds of Prey versus Soldiers of Fortune. We'll go over the intricacies of how the Birds of Prey deck works in a second, once we take a look at the teams and get started. Uh, slightly Halloween map, slightly altered map that we've been playing Crisis Protocol on just because of lack of time to set up a new table. But a bunch of extra scenery added because this game requires more scenery than Crisis Protocol. So, with that, let's take a look at the teams, get things underway. So here are our Soldiers of Fortune being led by Bat Bane, Bane the Bat, whatever you want to call him. He is a powerhouse, he has close combat fighter, uh, or master fighter, whatever it's called, the bonus from I Will Break You. And he's going to murder things. And then he is joined by his two new uh, Soldiers of Fortune from the most recent releases. Infiltrate Op and the well-known name of Malacia, maybe? <laughs> then also Stealth Op. And Dreadnought up with his Tomahawks as well. So just five miniatures there. Obviously using largely the Soldiers of Fortune objective deck. I think there's some neutral ones mixed in. And Bane the Bats card as well. And so here are our Birds of Prey with their objective deck included. Almost the same as the last time. Being led by Poison Ivy the 3rd edition. We have Frank the Plant with the Ancient Plant upgrade. Which is a massive 40 extra rep. We have Harlequin. However, she is this, that's the old Gotham City Sirens miniature. However, that start stat card is being used, so it's the Harley Quinn from the Birds of Prey Bat Box, just because it's different. So that is the rules that are going to be used for her. We also have Kite Man, and then Ivy's Plants 1, 2, and 3. And again, the plants are free suspect markers at the start of the game. They can pop up during an activation, so there will only be three miniatures on the table to start with for the Birds of Prey. The other thing to note about their objectives, you get this card, very nice looking card, with the objective deck. If a Birds of Prey crew rather, includes any models with the shared affiliation Batman, the whole crew counts as having the Batman affiliation for the purposes of the Rivals rule. That is just so that you can have Katana like we did last time without it breaking the rules and Montoya, I think, from the Birds of Prey bat box. The other thing to note, when there's a wing symbol on an objective card to score it, this special rule here applies. There's a rule in bold. And if the rule and bold is met, you can place the objective card in play on the table and it becomes easier to score. Now, that will be clearer once there's an objective card played in this way. But essentially for the Birds of Prey specific objective decks, there's two possible scoring conditions. One is easier than the other, but a bad thing has to happen before the easier one is in play. And then also you have to play it face up on the table so the opponent knows what you're trying to get. So that's just what that symbol means. Again, we'll see it in action as we play, so if that wasn't clear, We'll go over it as it happens. So with that, we need to see what deployment type we're getting. All right, let us see what we're getting here. Simple enough, we are getting showdown, but you have to deploy your leader, sidekicks, or free agents first. So one team eight inches in, one team eight inches in. We'll get that done and also get the free suspect markers set up for the plants as well. And be back at deployment. So both crews are set up, the Birds of Prey are on your left and the Soldiers of Fortune are on the right. There is no objective cards being played prior to the first turn beginning. Totally forgot to mention at the top of the video as well, these are going to be two interesting crews to fight each other because it seems like the Birds of Prey like to kind of lock down a point or an area on the map and hold it and to that end this is where the free suspect markers for the four plants have been placed. As you can see them, they're not within four so they're not breaking the rules etc. Although it does say you can place them anywhere. Which you know, it's a poorly written night models rule. Does that mean that it avoids the usual rules for uh, suspect markers, i.e. you can't be within two inches of your deployment zone and you can't be within four of each other? Who knows, on the assumption that you have to follow the normal rules, that's just outside of deployment by two and then they're at least four apart. So it's following the rules, assuming you need to, but who knows for sure. Either way, they're gathered there and as I was saying, Birds of Prey like to hold down an area, it feels like, especially if you get like uh, Poison Ivy's specific card that we saw last time they were on the table. Whereas Soldiers of Fortune, they like forcing the opponent to try and stop them controlling a specific area of the map. So it's kind of like forced movement versus one to stay put, and that's quite an interesting mix. We'll see who comes out on top. The three miniatures on the table for Birds of Prey all have Audacity. Frank has Audacity off the table, and then we also have Bane, and then the others here, and... Stealth Ob is there because he has undercover so he can deploy up to 8 outside of deployment. It will be the Birds of Prey getting first activation. No objective cards being played. Let's get this started. 
So Kite Man got the game started with Audacity, of course. He did he move up and did nothing else. However, during his activation, a seismic marker was removed and the venomous spitting plant was popped up right there. So that's the one with the ranged attack. It isn't just the four inch bubble around himself. Just to control the sort of almost center of the map. The center of the map's roughly like there-ish. But we'll see what happens as we go over to Soldier's Fortune first activation. Malacia, everybody's favourite named new soldier for Soldiers of Fortune, activated with Audacity. She did a super jump just to help clear the extra distance required to get to where she is, and she placed a suspect marker and then also placed, or played rather, Invasion. Place a suspect marker within 4 inches of a scenery element that's within 4 inches of an enemy model. The barricade is within 4 of the plant that just popped up, and that is within 4 of it, so it counts. Uh, oh, forgot to roll a d6. Just quickly do that now. Oh, 6. Okay, well. So for every activation thereafter, if when it reaches zero, that suspect marker is still in play, which is fairly likely, this card is scored. So Invasion is now in play, just put it to one side, and that's our turn. Harley Quinn activated, and there had to be a little bit of a retcon because played out a turn and then realised, oh hang on, there's a much smarter thing to do, and had to revert. Not 100% sure that suspect marker is exactly where it was before, because originally a uh, plant was placed, but to make the, the better turn work, plant can't be placed. So hopefully that's in roughly the right position, apologies if it is not. But what Harley did was she moved her 12 plus 1 for Acrobat, 13, roughly, I don't think that's the full 13, to go there. Then she did a special action to goad Mal Malicia to make her move. You do an opposed willpower roll, she passed it. A uh, roll, not rule. Moved her up to 4, and then placed a suspect marker for her tactical action, which in turn Scored, look, it's an in English Birds of Prey card, we can actually look at it and understand it. A friendly model places a suspect marker within four of an enemy model, and you have already have at least three friendly suspect markers in play, hence that needing to not be a plant, so one, two, three. That's the fourth one, it's within four of her and it plays. However, just to go over what those rules were talking about at the start, if the bold text happens during the match, an opponent has more suspect markers in play than you, for instance, that's this card, you could place this card t face up on the table and say, okay, I'm now trying to score this, and the scoring condition becomes the easier second part, which is a friendly model places a suspect marker within four of an enemy model. Much, much easier than the top text, but it has to be played up on the table so your opponent knows you're trying to score. That's, that's what it means when it's talking about the Birds of Prey scoring condition being special. Either way, Imposition has scored for two, putting them on the board. Harley's up front though, which is a little dangerous but at least she got them on the scoreboard. The Stealth Op was the next act to activate and he had Audacity but he didn't really make use of it, he just did a movement action, staying out of line of sight, where you can see him there, moving towards action and staying out of the 4 inch attack bubble of that plant there. Simple enough activation for the Birds of Prey, this plant that spawned earlier took a turn and presumably during its activation the rule for spawning a plant uh, applies. So Frank has popped up instead of that suspect marker which was theirs, which has disappeared, and he did have Audacity assigned to him before the turn began. So the Stealth Op is no longer safe from Frank, is the gist of what's happening here. So he's kind of being in like a defensive position there again. Birds of Prey are kind of wanting to hold the centre of the map, which is advantageous because Soldiers of Fortune have those objective cards that require the centre of the map to be theirs. Infiltrate Op was next up with Audacity. She moved into a better position, although she is illuminated by the light now, but I don't think... No, she's not in, under any threat from range, so it doesn't really matter. So she moved and then took some shots at Frank. She obviously moved, so she loses two dice. And as a result, only did one blood to Frank, and he is buffed up by having the Ancient Plant upgrade, so he's in no particular danger. So Frank activated and he attacked the Stealth Op with his improved stats from being the Ancient Plant that he is and he did two blood damage. So what that means is, because he did at least one blood, Stealth Op has been devoured and is slowly digesting inside Frank. Oh, and as per last time uh, someone did point out, there is actually a rule in the rulebook that says every model must activate. So he's already activated this turn, it's irrelevant. But next turn, he can't choose to do nothing. He must try and escape, which means if he fails, he takes another two blood damage. But if he gets out, he gets out. So And also he could be freed by like Bane or the tomahawks cutting into Frank, we'll see, but for now he is digested. So the Dreadnought op activated and he did a move action to get into base to base with Frank, however he does not have audacity so he can't do an attack. Now Frank can only devour one person at a time so he's in no danger of being eaten, 
but it does mean he's going to have to wait till next turn to try and hack out his chum being melted in his stomach. So now it's over to Ivy to end the turn unless a plant is spawned. There's still two possible plants that could pop up. And then back over to Bane. Oh, and also after Ivy's turn, this is scoring, I think. Either way, she ain't getting to it, and Bane isn't going to get rid of his own objective, so more or less that guarantees Invasion is scoring. So Ivy activated with Audacity, she moved up her 8 inches, or yeah, it's 8 inches, I think, for her, and then she did a special action, she did Green Web, which is a plant within 8, which Frank was, gets to perform an attack action. So Frank attacked the Dreadnought Op, and actually did really well, and did 3 blood to him. So that is backfiring somewhat. She also act, uh, changed this suspect marker that was there into a plant to back Harley up a little bit. So there is potentially one more activation here for Birds of Prey. But it is definitely over to Batbane to end Soldier of Fortune's first turn. So Batbane activated with Audacity and also Invasion has scored for Soldier of Fortune. i to say that. He just did a move action out of sight over here. Uh, his movement wasn't quite good enough, he's only got 8 movement to get much further than that, so that's all he did. And then this plant, because uh, she's in 4 within 4, it was able to do an attack. It did, it did 1 damage, and it also has the poison effect. So, Malacia, am I getting it right every time for a change? Malacia, 1 blood and poison on her, and that does take us to the end of battle round 1, so we'll check back in a second to see if there's any end of round cards being played. So at the end of battle round one, there is no objective cards being played, the scoring has already happened, there's no stun damage, the only damage done in the turn was blood damage, so there's no healing to be done. Malacia passed her poison roll at the end of the turn, so she has not taken further damage, but poison stays now, it's much more potent than it was in third edition, uh, second edition rather. So that is it, moving on to the first phase of battle round two. So to get Battle Round 2 started, it will be the Soldiers of Fortune going first, however, both sides are playing objective cards in Phase 1. The Birds of Prey are playing Overwhelming Charisma. Choose one friendly model and one enemy model. The chosen friendly model reveals more suspect markers that round than the enemy does. The chosen model is going to be Harley Quinn, and the chosen enemy model is going to be Gun Lady at the back. So that's now in play. If Harley gets one suspect marker and she gets none, this will score for three, so that is in play. You can see who has Audacity as well on the table there. And then we come over here. Soldiers of Fortune are playing Domination, which is you place an event marker in enemy contact. So it's in contact with this plant right there. Any model can use their tactical action as a manipulate to move it within four of its current position. End of the round, if there's more Soldiers of Fortune within four inches of it than the enemy, it scores for three. So that is also in play. Obviously, Bane and Malacia are hoping to dominate here to control it. And again, you can see who has Audacity. It's essentially everyone left on the table because the Stealth Op is digesting inside Frank. So, let's get on with the Soldiers of Fortune first activation. So the first activation was Bane the Bat. He did a move action. He started with Audacity. He used two effort to attack the plant, which is utterly unnecessary, but he did it so that Search and Destroy could be scored. Friendly model scores at least two successful hits in an action in which it used two effort. He used two effort. He did ten stun. That plant is very knocked out, and when a plant is knocked out, it's just removed as a casualty. But remember, plants can keep coming back, so it's not like it's gone forever. But that is two more victory points for Soldiers of Fortune, and Bane is done. Harley Quinn activated and got out of dodge. I also totally forgot to mention, but both Bane and Malacia have used a Venom Dose. Uh, she only has one, he has two. So that's in effect, totally forgot to mention that, also adaptable for the second turn in a row, which has also not been mentioned for both Poison Ivy and Har uh, Harley, are used for extra defence. Anyway, she moved past them over here, and then she did a manipulate as her tactical action to remove the suspect marker there. So now if she doesn't do a reveal, which she can do, she can potentially reach this, uh, that Kite Man card will score now. She has also placed the suspect marker, and you might be thinking, but that's two tactical actions as manipulates, how did she do that? Harley has dis Mental Disorder, The Voices, which means that her special action is a wild card and can be used as any other action type, which means it could be an attack, it could be a manipulate, it could be just used as a special, but it's a kind of a variant on the old Gotham City Sirens rule that she imparted. So that's why she was able to place a suspect marker as well as reveal, in case you're curious. Tomahawk op activated and stayed where he was with Audacity. He used Devastating Blows as special action, then unleashed an attack on poor Frank. But 
with tough skin, making the strength die one less, plus it's defendable against like normal attacks. He did well and only took one hit for blood and stun. One blood, one stun. And that's it. Actually, actually, I think when you use Devastating Blow, you get Bleed 1, or is it Crit Bleed 1? I'll need to double check. If it's Crit Bleed 1, he didn't get a crit, so it doesn't matter. If it's just Bleed 1, then that means that Frank also took one extra blood damage. The walking meme Kite Man activated with Audacity, and he started near suspect markers and ended uh, elsewhere, but because he started near it, his Kite roll comes into play, so he gets a couple of inches of extra movement. He just moved around the corner, though, with Audacity, and he placed a suspect marker that's just outside 4 as the crow flies like that, and that does also score another in position. Place it within 4 of an enemy model, boom, and have at least 3 in play, which there is. So he scored that for 2. Now that is obviously closer to her, so she could definitely reach that and reveal it, but again she's giving up a turn of shooting to do so, however it might be less dangerous than going after the one over here by Harley. We'll see. Malicia activated and first of all, well with Audacity as well, first of all placed a suspect marker, placed another invasion using the same scenery element, rolled a 1 so after the next model activation invasion is going to score so I don't think there's anything to do to stop it. But that was in play, she then did her special action which was a super jump to give her movement just to help cover this, to help uh, domination score at the end of the round so both those are in play and now it's back over to the bird's prey. So we're staying over here, Poison Ivy activated with Audacity. She moved up to here and then for a special action she used Chlorokinesis, which means she can move from one area of an action zone of a plant into the other, and Frank has a 6 inch thanks to his upgrade of Ancient Plants, so she moved over here and based the base, so then she could attack. She used a second special action which she can do because she's scientific, which is the aspect of scientific in 3rd edition I keep forgetting. And gives people the ability to do two special actions in a turn at no cost. So she did another special action and did Mortal Kiss to try and insta-kill him. Didn't insta-kill him but did get one hit through with her plants for one blood and one stun. So the Infiltrate op activated and for gold attacking in order to deny points. She moved and revealed the suspect marker meaning that both she and Harley have revealed one in their turns so overwhelming charisma will not score and will just be discarded at the end of the turn. Also during her turn, Global Offensive was played, have more friendly models with the Veteran trait and played under our enemy suspect markers. Every person in the Soldiers of Fortune have the Veteran trait, so that's 5 versus 1, 2, 3 suspect markers. So that has scored for an easy 3 victory points. So, now it's over to Frank, and then back over to the poor Stealth Ops stuck inside Frank, who has to activate after that. Oh, and there's also that plant down there, but nothing's in his action zone, I think, so there's nothing he can do unless she's accidentally walked within four, in which case he could attack, because line of sight is not required for plants. So Frank unleashed his anger on the Dreadnought Op and only did one attack through, so one blood, and that's it. Double checked to see if the Stealth Op would get a turn, and he did not, so he has taken two blood damage and putting him at four of five HP, so he's very close to just being eaten. So that was that would have been the last Soldier Fortune activation, so that's their turn over. Um, Domination is scoring. This plant is within four, but it doesn't have a melee attack. This is the ranged plant, and ranged attacks with the plant still requires line of sight. So only close combat attacks that have the four inch can go around corners. So Melentia is safe. She'll still need to do a poison check, and we'll also see if any cards are being played at the end of the round. Oh, and of course, Overwhelming Charisma didn't score. So there is no objective cards being played at the end of battle round 2, everyone who has stun damage is recovering 1, so that's Frank, Bane and Dreadnought Op, they've all recovered 1, uh, blood damage is obviously not healing, so with that, oh and sorry, the poison roll here was passed so no damage but again the poison lingers. So we're going into battle round 3 with Soldiers of Fortune getting first activation again, we'll be back in a second to check who has audacity and whether any phase 1 objective cards are being played. So to start battle round 3, the penultimate turn, everybody who had Audacity has kept it, so it's all the same people. Another Domination is being played for Soldiers of Fortune, the event marker has been placed in contact with the Venomous Plant there, so obviously they're looking to repeat the last turn, that's now in play for potential 3 at the end of the turn. No other cards being played, so let's just jump into Soldier of Fortune's first activation. Malicia was the first up and she activated with Audacity, did a super jump to move over here attacked the plant and whiffed badly. The first really bad roll anybody's had this game, she did no damage to that plant. Strength I didn't even get through. 
Did, however, play a free for all on her turn, have more models than the opponent within four of the center. Again, the center is roughly there. Not as likely it's going to score with the big cluster of birds of prey there, but hey, it's played. It's also in play with domination, so it's there potentially to score at the end of a turn. And it's a draw as for the domination event marker as well, currently. So we're staying with this middle cluster, Ivy activated, and first of all, used Mortal Kiss for her first special action. Attacked the Dreadnought Op and did nothing. So then she used green, the green, whatever that attack was called, which lets her make a plant within a certain distance attack. She made Frank attack him. Frank only did one damage. He's on one endurance left, so he'd lived. He's probably gonna get a turn. Ivy had a pretty bad turn there. So the Dreadnought Op tried to get his revenge by attacking Frank. Only got one hit through for one blood, one stun. And it does need to be a crit for the blood on Devastating Blow to, to crit, I forgot to mention that earlier after checking. And then he moved away out of the six inches of Frank's attack range, so Frank can't finish him off, which means it would be down to Kite Man, which might be the next activation, let's see. So it was Kite Man's chance to shine, he activated with Audacity, he went after the Dreadnought Op and he did nothing. He whiffed. It doesn't help that he's losing a die because of light armor on the Dreadnought Op, which Frank was suffering with a little bit as well, but no, he did no damage, Kite Man is useless. So we have to come over this end of the table as the Infiltrate Op decided to retreat with Audacity behind here to place a suspect marker that you can just see and that was in order to score a, whoop, a Black Ops, a friendly model places a suspect within 8 inches of an enemy model that cannot draw a line of sight to the friendly model or suspect marker. It's as you go by the crow flies, Ivy or Frank, whichever you want to choose, are within 8. Now again, if this card is not done like that, like if you don't measure as the crow flies, you measure around the corner, that would not be within 8. It's not clear. So, not 100% sure if that counts or not. I guess technically, she could have. She doesn't need to be as far back as she is from Ivy. It doesn't say all models have to be able to not draw a line of sight. It's just one. Yeah, so actually, you know what, just to keep things less ambiguous, let's just say she's like there. So then even if you go round the corner with it, it's still within eight. So yeah, Black Ops has scored. Frank was next up and Malacia was within his six inch bubble, not four because of his upgrade again, just so you're clear. So he attacked her and got two hits through, and that's despite her having medium armor, so you lose two attack dice. Couldn't get through the losing one on the Dreadnought, but losing two on Malacia, whatever. So that's two more damage on her. I think I just pushed her at three. She's not really in any danger of dying before the end of the game, even with poison currently. But we'll see as we move on to either Bane or the Stealth Op inside Frank. Bane the Bat activated, moved up to the event marker, Smack the spitting plant around for a casual 8 damage and more than enough to stun which means it is removed as a casualty. They're both holding that. Free for all, I, I, it's a draw more or less. Actually no, it's one playing two. Bane is from where he is and his, his base made it very hard to get any closer. The, the middle of the map is roughly there so free for all it looks like it's not going to score. But either way, uh, is that everyone now that that plant got taken out? Oh no, Harley. Harley and then the poor sodden side of Frank. So Harley Quinn activated and moved where you can see her, but first I work best alone was played. So you're supposed to place this behind Harley's card, but I have it here just to show you. So every time you place a suspect marker, which is what she did, you roll a numeric counter, place it on it, roll a one. Then during the recount phase of a turn, so at the end of a turn, when you're working your points, etc., you roll a die, and if it matches any of the counters on any of the suspect markers placed by this person, so this is best played early in the game, but luck of the draw, you score the card. And if you do score the card, you remove all the numeric counters, and then boom, it's gone. So, it's in play. It's not as likely it's going to score. <laughs> Got to roll a 1 in the recount phase, might do it on camera, we'll wait and see. So that is that. So now it's just down to whether Frank gets a meal, or if there's a dramatic escape at the last second. Has there been, has that katana come to use? Has he slipped Frank down the belly on the inside to escape? Has Stealth Hawk made it out? He has not. He failed his endurance roll. That's what you get for only having 5 endurance. He has been devoured by Frank, he is gone, casualty, he didn't score any cards, but that is a casualty. So at the end of the penultimate battle round, a, the nest has been played. Now, this is a bit weird because it has a 3, but then it also has the special condition and it says during the recount phase. The recount phase is at the end, so surely that should be a 4 regardless of this. I think this is a misprint, could be wrong, but during the recount phase, which we're in now, you have more models inside enemy deployment zone than your opponent. They, there's no Soldiers of Fortune left in their deployment zone. 
Harley moved into it, so it has scored for three. The alternative is if an opponent touches your deployment zone, you can place this face up and then you just need to have one enemy over there. But either way, it has scored. We also need to see if I work best alone has scored. Nope. It did not, barely, so that did not score. Free for all has not scored, but domination has. So they each earned three at the end phase. It will be the Birds of Prey going first as we go into the last battle round. So at the start of battle round four, there are no phase one objective cards being played. And, oh, forgot to mention Malacia's poison did not affect her at the end of the turn again. So with that, we're jumping straight into the last battle round. Nothing else being played. Everyone has audacity that's left alive. Let's see what happens. So Kite Man got the last turn started. He tried to take out Dreadnought Op and could not do it. Also just realized Kite Man does stun damage, so it's not like he would have killed him anyway. Um, but either way, he didn't do any damage, so it's irrelevant. He then moved back six on the off chance a free-for-all gets played, so there's more people within the middle. It's so a last ditch effort grab for victory points as Malacia activated, backed up, put down a suspect marker and scored another Black Ops. For with being within 8 of Kite Man, he can't see her or the marker she placed. It has scored. Ivy activated and first of all tried to use Hypnosis on the Dreadnought Op and it failed the willpower roll. So then she did a movement action and a tactical attack action. Two of her plant hits got through for one blood, one stun each. Two blood, two stun. The stun is irrelevant. The blood is enough to remove the Dreadnought Op. He will not be getting a turn. It did not score any cards, but there is one less body on the field. And one less veteran, I guess, which could be important. So Bane the Bat activated and has moved where you saw him. It's very unfortunate, but he's not had the chance to really smash face this match, um, which makes his point cost a bit prohibitive. Anyway, Hard Point was played as a resource, which means he can remove a suspect marker within four and gain a Venom Dose. He did that purely because originally he was going to place uh, 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 the one where you, you place within four of a scenery element within four. I forgot what it's called offhand. The one that scored earlier. But in playing that card, and Global Offensive was drawn, and that's much easier to score because there's not a guarantee that the other one will score before the end of the game. Have more models with the veteran than there are suspect markers. One, two, three, four. Oh, actually, no, with the death of Tomahawk Op, there's only one, two, three. Never mind, this can't be scored. Oh, no. Well, in that case, the other thing will happen, and there'll be a suspect marker there because it's within four of Frank. And we'll see what number it is at the next activation. So Invasion was the name I was blanking on. And it, one was rolled. So after Frank's activation. Because Frank was the one who activated. It has already scored. So Invasion has scored. But Frank got the strength die through on this Bane the Bat. Because this Bane the Bat does not have a Bat Cape. Did one damage. So he has been devoured. And is slowly digesting. How did he fit in there? I don't know. But it doesn't matter. Because the game is obviously about to end. So he's not going to get devoured fully. Uh, oh, actually, it does matter because if somehow the the Frank card was drawn, he counts as a casualty at the end of the game, so it could score. Um, we'll see. So now it's either it's Harley and then it's infiltrate up around the far side of that building. We'll just see if they can do anything to score and take us to the end of the game. So Harley just moved on her turn and placed down another suspect marker. The dice roll was a three for it, so a one or a three at the end of the game will score that. And you might be wondering why on earth is Frank there? Regrowth was played as a resource. During your model's activation, target a friendly model with the plant trait within 8 of Poison Ivy, and then place that anywhere in the game board in contact with a friendly suspect marker. Doesn't say to remove the suspect marker either. So Frank moved. Why play that when it doesn't do anything? It was to get another objective card in hand for a potential thing to score. Didn't pan out that way, unfortunately. Now the infiltrate up on the far side of that building still has to activate. There is nothing to score, no matter what they do. So we are just going to move into the end of the game. And before we add up the score, that does mean there is a potential two more victory points for Birds of Prey if a three or a one is rolled on that die. <laughs> of course, it was a two. So I work best alone does not score. So before we count these up, although one pile is definitely a lot thicker than another, there actually was one end of game score. Again, I think this should say a four, not a three. Um, have more models in the enemy deployment than in your deployment, so Harley and Frank contribute to that scoring again. That's another card. So anyway, Birds of Prey, 3, 6, 7, 8, only 10. 10 playing, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 playing 10. The Soldiers of Fortune deck is very, 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 very powerful. So it's no surprise that there was a little bit of struggling there. There was, sadly wasn't a chance to get any of the secondary objectives kicked in. It's just the way it worked out. I, I think the Birds of Prey deck is built more around the Birds of Prey box. I think bringing Ivy and all her plants is probably a trap to, that you fall into that doesn't actually synergize with the deck. Bringing her and Frank, that's fine. Maybe don't give Frank the upgrade, I don't know. But bringing lots of the little plants, I mean, they're only like 15 rep each. Where are they? 17, 14, and 16. Instead of that, bring a few more bodies that can help you score this kind of thing. I feel they did better when Katana was in the list as well. Kite Man, you could obviously dump him, but it's, it's a meme for him and Ivy to be together. So they had a tough time there. I mean, they were winning the, the kill rate, that's for sure. I'm sure um, Batbane would have broken out because his endurance is fantastic. But, yeah, they, they lost two, whereas Birds of Prey, they lost some replaceable plants, and that's it. So they held their own. It was just it was down to luck of the draw of the objectives, and I feel the Soldiers of Fortune deck just being so much stronger, at least at first blush, than the Birds of Prey. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this battle report. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more Batman in the future. And until then, it's for now.